you were talking a little bit about the uh, bison uh, ability to return the kick. I've got a feeling this kick probably will be pinched a little bit and kept on the ground. Well, it was a very good decision the last time that yeah. Bird kicked off because he put it out of bounds at the 22 yard line with Raul Sanchez on the receiving end of it. And now they're going to try an onside kick. No, they'll be kicking it up. They'll try one side, Dan Reska, at his own 31 yard line. So the Bison, again, missing another opportunity to return a kick with 401 remaining in the first half. We'll go back on offense, trailing Pittsburgh State 14 to seven. We have yet to see a turnover in this football game. Yeah, and the turnover margin for both football teams is obviously on the plus end of things. The Bison plus five and the Gorillas, an amazing plus 19 in the turnover column. And a lot like North Dakota last week, they're very opportunistic when they get the turnover to turn it into points. First down for Arden Beachy. Balls at the 32 yard line. They've got three defensive backs on the wide side covering the two wide receivers and on the dive play they get it out just shy of the 35 yard line and Mark Hansen the ball carrier who you see Donovan Larson the defensive line coach for North Dakota State conferring on what they're going to try to do to slow down Ronald Moore and there's not a whole lot you can do both these teams are so physical you can X and O but so much with Matt Steinberg on the bench down there. Second down, let's make it about seven from the 35-yard line. Beachy's got two tight ends against a five-man front. The counter option. Beachy has an alley, and he's out to the 40, three, short of the first the down. But Beachy, again, very close to breaking one for big yards. Is it me, or does it look like Pittsburgh State is picking something up in the uh, formation or the Bison or something? Because it looks like their defensive line, the Gorillas, is shifting a little bit, and I haven't seen them wrong yet. Arden Beachy was about a step away from breaking that one for a long game. And now it is a big third down for the Bison offense. We're inside the three-minute mark remaining first half. From the 40-yard line, third down and two. Beachy, this is Carlson trying to turn the corner. This will be a Bison first down as the free safety, Chris Brown, tried to fill the alley, but Carlson was able to turn the corner before being run out of bounds by Duke Palmer. Good job of stringing out the play, though. The Bison, the last four or five plays, have been trying to keep it right smack up the middle taking it outside this time and seeing what they can do about causing a little damage out there. I am really surprised at some of these scores around the country. New Haven, a final over Ferris, 35-13. New Haven going into the playoffs undefeated and remaining there now at 12-0. This is T.R. McDonald in motion to the wide side of the field. On first down, Vici wants to throw it. He's got McDonald open at the 49, and that will be about a six-yard gain for the Bison. McDonald's that's the first slip of the day we've seen on this field. I wasn't really sure why he had to slip on that play. It looked like it just took too long to develop. He had to wait for the ball a little too much and maybe overran the ball just a tad. Nevertheless, it picks up a nice seven-yard gain for North Dakota State. Well, we'll make it about six. All At right, the 49 six. of the Gorillas, it'll be second down and about four. Beachy with two tight ends against a five-man front. There you see the Gorillas shifting after the audible. On the dive, this is going to be Sanchez, and he's got a first down inside the 45-yard line. And Raul Sanchez, who has put together a very fine string of football games here in the twilight of his career at North Dakota State. That was number 40, Tim Bradbury, getting the stop initially, but he was unable to drag him down. Did a great job, Sanchez, of just dragging the defender And the off. Bison now inside the two-minute mark with a minute 50 remaining. On first down from the Gorilla 44. Now to a 40 package and five defensive backs. The blitz is on. Beachy wants to throw it back. He gets out of the pocket and Beachy is going to eat it. Outside the 40 and down to the 35 yard line and they keep the clock running. He didn't get out of bounds. He was about an inch away from being sacked and turned it into a nine yard gain. But his inability to get out of bounds forces North Dakota State to call a timeout now. So the Bison with a timeout in the football at the Gorilla 35 with a second down and one with a minute 27 remaining in the first half. 
trailing the Pittsburgh State 14-7. And we'll be back with more NCAA playoff action from Pittsburgh, Kansas after this. Things aren't going well in North Dakota, yet some say we've been winning. Do you feel like you've been winning for the last six years? Does the man who lost this dealership feel like a winner? Our economy is in serious trouble, and Jack Dalrymple has an answer. In this campaign, I've given my ideas on how to create jobs. Some say there's no use. I say we deserve better. Send me to Washington, and I'll take on all comers until we make it better. With taxes going up and interest rates coming down, it's time to consider a tax-free alternative. ND Tax-Free Fund offers you a high level of tax-free dividends from a portfolio of top-quality North Dakota municipal bonds. So ask your investment dealer about North Dakota's only home-based tax-free fund. For more complete information, including charges and expenses, obtain a prospectus from your investment dealer. Read it carefully before you invest or send money. ND Capital, member NASD and SIPC. North Dakota State trails Pittsburgh with a minute 27 remaining in the first half, 14 to 7, with a second down and one from the Gorilla 35. The Bison have burned one timeout here in this drive. Beachy on the counter option, and this is going to be Carlson, and Carlson has the first down. And I think we saw pretty good evidence of how Troy Wilson can get up the field and cause problems on the perimeter for every team. First down. He really made North Dakota have to do a lot of things different. I would imagine after occurring the halftime. First and ten for the Bison at the 31. And there he is up the field, and he's got great arm span. He might spat that ball down here. First down and 10 from the 31 of Pittsburgh State with a minute five remaining in the first half. Beachy looking for McDonald and throws the ball out of bounds. Good coverage on the near side by Duke Palmer. The intended receiver was Sean Cahill. Beachy had a blocker out in front of him in Carlson. Who knows, he may have gone a little ways if he could have turned it upfield. Pressure came from Jerry Boone out of his outside linebacker spot for Pittsburgh State. Ludwig Milfors, his longest field goal this year was 37 yards. Right now, he'd be looking at about a 48-yard attempt, but with 101 remaining second down and 10 from the 31-yard line, the Bison still with plenty of time and downs before they would turn to their place kicker. Second and 10, 31. Five-man front, Beachy. He wants the throw back. He's got Garen at the 19, first down Bison. Arden Beachy with the throwback pass on the down and in to Craig Garen, who started his career at North Dakota State as a quarterback and played quarterback this year a little bit in the latter part of the season. Watch the composure here by Beachy. He's got pressure around him, but still has time to get the ball off and threw it the only place the defender couldn't get it. Two tight ends, 19-yard line, first down and 10. Here comes the blitz. Beachy across the middle. Garen, first down, goal line at the three, and that's going to be a big completion for the Bison. And again, Garen beating Joel Thornton, who's got four interceptions on the year, this time on the short post. Pittsburgh State has been susceptible to the pass the entire football season. That's a big play for North Dakota State over the middle. 35 seconds and counting remaining in the first half. First and goal, three-yard line. Beachy. The option. Beachy carries it himself. Beachy, touchdown, Bison. Touchdown. North Dakota State with 22 seconds remaining in the first half and now with an opportunity to tie it before halftime. Great drive by North Dakota State. Used their timeouts well. Stopped the clock when they needed to. It culminates in a 68-yard, the 11 play drive with Beachy going in from about three yards out. Arden Beachy, and now Ludwig Milfors off the hold of Pete Erickson. And Milfors will tie the game at 14 with 22 seconds remaining here in the first half. 
Big, big drive for North Dakota State to be able to come down and tie that up just before we go into the intermission. You can bet they'll be keeping the ball on the ground for the kickoff, but some bad news now with Jim LaMarche not getting up from after that point after touchdown. Well, Jim LaMarche had an injured knee earlier this year, came into this season, penciled in as a starter and a player the Bison were really counting on, lost his position to a walk-on tackle in David Rose, who just cannot be taken out of the lineup. And then when LaMarche came back, he played uh, sparingly and now has played quite a bit today. But there you see the trainer, Scott, walking out. That will be the second Bison player that's been brought down today by the Gorillas. Turning into a costly game already here. We're only through one half, not even quite. North Dakota State keeping the ball on the ground, but as we've learned throughout the course of the season, not afraid to put the That's ball up either and exploiting that uh, run option and doing a great job of doing so. We have yet to see a turnover here today between these two teams. This has been a very well-played game, and there you see Jim LaMarche being helped off the field, and LaMarche, an excellent offensive lineman that... 6'1", 271, a senior out of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. And a very concerned Bison crowd here today. Brandenburg Field and North Dakota State cannot afford to lose anybody in that offensive line. And quite a bit of hype in this community. That is a gorilla. That is Gus Gorilla, believe it or not. They renovated gorilla, the Gus Gorilla this season, turned him into a little more of a promotion animal than he was a year ago. Along with I see he wears number one. Ronnie West, who won the Harlan Hill Trophy a year ago, wore that number here at Pittsburgh State. We'll go down to Dana Mock here momentarily and find out just how badly Jim LaMarche is injured. Now the kick by Ludwig Milfors, and he's going to boot this one. With a win behind him, it'll be a touchback. And Milfors kick goes through the end zone Chuck for Williams the touchback. Also. There's Dana. <laughs> Do a little bit of everything. Put a spiral on it, bud. Look, he's looking 20. for a receiver. He's going to tuck it he's, and go. He's going to go He's home. disciplined. No, he's got a guy open. All right, take the screen pass. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Do <laughs> <laughs> we have a replay of that? We, I mean, did you see how he looked off the free safety? I, I, and know, then... I think he was just trying to get a little more camera time is what he was doing. <laughs> 22 seconds remaining first half. Tied at 14. This game, everything it was billed to be. And Ronald Moore picks his way out for five yards, and that should Ronald do it. Both football teams, I think, played a very well-played game today, offensively and defensively. We have not seen any real big plays. We've seen a, a faked punt, but we've seen both teams chip away at one another for first downs and long drives. And that's going to do it for the first half as Ryan Hutchinson and Ronald Moore leave North the field Dakota with the State. Pittsburgh State Gorillas, the defending national champions and undefeated, tying North Dakota State here at halftime at 14. Dana Mock making his way over to visit with head coach Chuck Broyles, who's having a word with the referee, Mr. Wojak. He may not want to get his microphone too close to that conversation. Let's go down to Dana. He's with head coach Chuck Broyles. Broyles, your thoughts in the first half? I think that's basically what, what we expected between a number one and two well, team in the nation. they went on a nice drive first time they had the ball, and then, you know, we feel like we need to stop them, get field position. Our offense did a good job controlling the football, and, and right now uh, we haven't settled anything so far. Thanks, coach. <laughs> Dana Mock down on the field with head coach Chuck Broyles, and this has been a costly first half for North Dakota State. Jeff Hagman, defensive tackle, injured. Also, offensive lineman Jim LaMarche, an offensive tackle. So two big Bison players have gone down here in the first half, a costly first half for the Bison. And we are tied at halftime at 14. The two top-ranked teams in the nation, Pittsburgh State and North Dakota State, in front of a packed house here at Brandenburg Field. Carney Smith Stadium in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Take a look at this 1993 Buick Regal. It's one fun way to ride. 
The J.D. Power Survey calls Buick Regal the best car in its price class. I'm glad to hear that Buick beat those mighty imports. I knew we'd be back. Buick quality is the way. If you're looking for quality, value, and style, get into your quality Buick dealer and join the family. Buick is leading the way. Can you believe what's happening here? Hour after hour, and all I get are calls about this gotta have it slogan for Pepsi. Let's go to the phones. Regis, since it's gotta have it phenomena, I finally got something to talk to my kids about. He is bonding with his family because of Pepsi. I've never seen such a diverse group of people buying Pepsis at one time. Isn't that wonderful? We're all happy for you. I gotta have it. He's gotta have it. What's the matter with these people? If it ain't Pepsi, it ain't Pepsi. You got a good point there. I think so. Coming up next, Pepsi lovers who gotta have it and why. Pontiac, GMC truck, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, Mazda. Five good reasons Selland is your automotive superstore. Another reason, super deals like this. The comfortable and dependable 1993 Mazda Cab Plus pickup, starting as low as $10,995. Just $10,995 for a 93 Mazda pickup. So shop the superstore. Selland, south of I-94, Moorhead. Don and Boyd, Monday through Friday on 970 WDAY AM Radio. Don and Boyd, 6.30 AM, Monday through Friday on 970 WDAY AM Radio. Back in Pittsburgh, Kansas, we're at halftime of the Pitt State North Dakota State University football game. And the Bison in Pittsburgh State tied at 14, joining us for one of the uh, three amigos. Yeah. But not all, this is Dan Gus, but not all the amigos made it this no. trip, did they? Two of them couldn't make it, so uh, uh, we're here to cheer them on, and we're getting our money's worth today. Dan, quickly, your thoughts on this first half? Uh, I knew they'd play us tough, and it, it uh, is real close right now. I mean, 14 to 14, that's a great score at halftime. What do you think of the gathering here of Bison football fans? Are you impressed with what made it down here, or are you disappointed? I'm kind of disappointed in a way that uh, we've had five to 800 at a lot of the away games, and today it was, with the Thanksgiving break, I suppose that took a lot of people away. We've got a Bison flag flying high on this side of the stands. Tell us a story about that. Oh, that's uh, Mike Madsen's uh, flag, and... Uh, he sent it down, said, cheer on the bison and wave the flag guy. So that's what we're doing. Pass on the news that Mike's mother passed away. Yes. That's why he couldn't make it yes. down here. And our, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with Mike and his family. Yes. Uh, hi, Mike. <laughs> uh, he hasn't missed many football games, has he? No, Mike is a dedicated fan like myself, but uh, Mike got me into this, and I'm, I'm cheering him on, Mike. Are you are you connected with the Road Warriors at all? Are you guys kind of like a minor league affiliate to that? I think we're independents. Very good. Mike, enjoy the rest of the football game. I think the Bison have to do it on the ground or through the air? They've done it both in the first half. I think through the air, the way it looks. They're stopping our ground game pretty good. Dan, thanks very much. Enjoy Thank the game. Good. Let's go back upstairs. They fill and then have me turn. Exciting. I wanted a place where professors could call me by name and I felt free to ask them questions. It's a challenge. And I met with uh, two people in the admissions office and they talked to me and told me about any issue. And ever since then, I knew this was a school for me. It's knowledge, it's, it's education, it's... Uh... And as the land grant university in North Dakota, we've always had a commitment to economic development. If NDSU had not been, been in Fargo, I think we would have located in another community. There's a real sense of community here, and I think that's important. 
I think my best memories are probably with friends up here, and I've made some of the best friends I've ever had. I, I really like Fargo. It's, it seems like it's really supportive of the school. I think NDSU is very much a part of, of the Fargo-Moorhead community. Yeah, I'm really glad that I, I chose NDSU. There's no rival against the best and the strongest. For your home, it's Eagle Windows and Doors. In every room, Eagle Ideas bring visions to life. And because you want them to last, your dream shouldn't be left to just anybody. Eagle, giving vision to great ideas. Check out the complete line of low-E, low-maintenance Eagle wood windows and doors, distributed locally by Snyder Distributing. These are the signs of a failing economy, the signs of businesses that failed. For four years, target prices have gone down for every commodity North Dakota depends on. And as a direct result, we've lost $715 million. And the signs of what that means are everywhere. In this campaign, I've given my ideas on how to create jobs. Some say there's no use. I say we deserve better. Send me to Washington and I'll take on all comers until we make it better. Don and Boyd, Monday through Friday, on 970 WDAY AM Radio. Don and Boyd, 6.30 AM, Monday through Friday, on 970 WDAY AM Radio. After seven long years of planning, after 31 months of construction, at a cost of $48 million, the Fargo Dome is ready to become our area's premier attraction. I'm Dan Anderson. As the Fargo Dome opens its doors, join us for a complete look at this special event center. The Fargo Dome, a one-hour edition of New Center 6, Wednesday on WDAY-TV. Back in Pittsburgh, Kansas, where the Bison in Pittsburgh State tied at 14 at halftime. And Dale, we are, we are joined by some Bison fans down here. In fact, we have a 1964 graduate of North Dakota State who now resides in St. Louis. His name is John Yunker, and you may remember, you may recall the Yunker name. Tell us about that. Well, at Yunker Farm, the museum, children's museum, is my grandparents' home. What brought you to uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas today? The Bison. And that's it. That's, that's it. it. You didn't come here to do shopping didn't or anything like that? Didn't shop, didn't come to see the site, just the bison. How long have you been attracted to the bison program? Because I know in 64, they weren't quite there yet. I know I was 62, I think they had a winless season. I've been a diehard fan for years. I watched papers, anything I could read about them. Do they cover it very extensively now well, in St. Louis? Well, in the championship games they do, and in these regional playoffs they're covered well. And, and of course, Northeast Missouri State, Kirksville played last week, so it was covered well in the St. Louis papers. They said in the Kirksville papers that uh, Fargo was the, football was the only game in town up in Fargo and talked about the dome up there, which we're going to have to come up and see. Well, you knew about that all along. You, you didn't have to read the paper. Along. Right. But to get a normal score of just a, a, a conference oh, score, you have, in the box scores. You've yeah. got to read pretty hard. You've got to read Midwest colleges, and we'll find it. Your thoughts on this first half? Well, it's close, but we're going to win it. John, thanks for joining us. Have hey. a good trip home to St. Louis. Good luck Great seeing you again. We have some parents here who have made the trip. This is the Ski family. They follow, I know, the Bison football just to see your son, Mr. Pat, and he's caught two this year. This is Dwayne Ski, Eric's dad. Thanks for making the trip. Your thoughts on the first half? It's close. It's closer than you thought? I, it's exactly the kind of football game I thought it would be. But when Ronnie Moore ran that uh, fake punt in, my thought was, he's going to do it. Why would you use a guy that good in that position? But I was just afraid of that. I, you know, two of their bigger plays in the first half came on a little trickery. One was the fake button, another was a split in reverse. What has Eric told you about this game and, and meeting Pittsburgh State? Because I know he was there in 1990. He felt in 1990 that that was a championship game they played right there, and I think he expected he expected a real tough time in a similar game. How long a trip was it down here for you folks? 
We took a break in Ames, Iowa. We, we stopped Iowa. We stopped there for a while, but I, about ten hours. But worth every hour. Yes. Every bit of it. We wouldn't miss it. This is Eric's senior season. I want to know who's having more fun in this his last year, the parents or Eric himself. Uh, <laughs> well, we enjoy it, except my stomach's in knots now. <laughs> But we really enjoyed it. He loves it, too. He's what type of friends have you made in this program? And I know Eric has made some long-lasting friends. How about the parents? Oh, tons of friends. I mean, I think the senior parents are a really close group. We do a lot of things together, uh, see each other at uh, hotels, motels, uh, football games, you name it. I mean, it's, just been a, it's just been a ton of fun. What in the world do you folks do when Eric catches a pass? Jump up and down, yell, scream. <laughs> Same thing that Eric does, I think. All right. Folks, thanks for making the trip. Thanks, thanks for coming down here and talking to us. And we have a former national champion of North Dakota State, a man who played on the 86 national championship team, the 85 national championship team, uh, Ken Muckenhern, who now resides in? St. Louis, Missouri. Everybody resides in St. Louis. Yeah. Tell us what you're doing in St. Louis. Uh, right now I'm working for uh, GMAC, General Motors Acceptance Corporation. Muck, why'd you make the trip over here? Well, I tell you, I mean, if uh, the Bison are within a you know, driving distance, I wouldn't miss the game for the world. Wouldn't, wouldn't miss it for the world. Mm -hmm. How'd you find out they were coming here? How'd you how'd you know that they were coming here to Pittsburgh, Kansas, and playing here because of hosting throughout the playoffs? Well, I tell you, when I uh, watching the papers over the last couple of weeks, and uh, when I found out that it was coming down to Pittsburgh here, I said I told my wife right away that I was coming driving over right now. Well, what are you more proud of, playing for the green and gold or playing for the maroon? Minnesota. I tell you what, I'm proud of both of them because, uh, you know, winning a national championship with the Bison and being able to, you know, play with the uh, Minoman Indians uh, was, uh, was a lot of fun. And uh, congratu I congratulate uh, Minoman on their uh, our championship game this past, uh, yesterday I think it was. You made that normal transition from quarterback to defensive tackle. I know a lot of people do that. Your thoughts on this first half? You're an old football player. Well, it was a it was a tough half in terms of big plays. I mean, we kind of gave up a big big play on the uh, fake uh, punt there. Um, so I guess it's going to come down to who's going to make the big plays in the second half to come back and uh, win it. For them. Final question: What are your fondest memories of North Dakota State now that you're away from the program for a few years? Uh, I guess that my fondest memories of uh, you know, of course, playing in the national championship football games and uh, being associated with you know the community of Fargo and and being able to. Uh, relate with everyone in the Fargo area, uh, the familiness or the family-oriented type of uh, uh, structure there, and I guess that's one of my fondest memories of being able to, you know, play in Fargo. Luck, we missed seeing that old number 81 out there. Great seeing you again. You We're at halftime, where the Bison and Pittsburgh State are tied at 14. The Tool Crib of the North offers big savings on Makita power tools through the holidays. Cut with precision with the Makita LS1030 heavy-duty miter saw. Now just $179.95. Drive home savings on the new 9.6-volt Makita cordless drill kit with extra battery for only $159.95. Or cut wood like butter with the Makita 7 and a quarter inch super-duty circular saw with carrying case. Now only $119.95. Save big on Makita power tools through the holidays at Acme Electric Tool Crib of the North. In Grand Forks and Fargo. He's always stood up for North Dakota agriculture, taken on the Washington insiders and their anti-farm policies. He brought 32 farm groups together to forge an action plan for agriculture, to expand exports, get tough on trade, and target farm programs to family farmers, not the corporate giants. Real solutions to strengthen our rural economy. That's why 25 major farm leaders say we can't afford to lose Kent Conrad. He's done a terrific job. Kent Conrad, the right fights for North Dakota. You know, I cannot believe the changes going on in local banking. I mean, first this, first that, this name to that name. I mean, there is so much confusion. There's no confusion over at State Bank of Fargo and State Bank of West Fargo. I've checked it out. They've got the best rates, hours, service, and locations. You ought to do what everybody else is doing. Move your accounts over to State Bank of Fargo and State Bank of West Fargo. And the good news is there's not going to be any change. There are locally owned neighborhood banks. Don and Boyd, Monday through Friday on 970 WDAY AM Radio. Don and Boyd, 6.30 AM, Monday through Friday on 970 WDAY AM Radio.
Pittsburgh Field in Pittsburgh, Kansas. We are tied at 14, the two top-ranked teams in the nation, the defending national champions, Pittsburgh State and North Dakota State, the champions out of the North Central Conference. Joining us now, Athletic Director Dr. Bob Benson of North Dakota State. Bob, uh, we didn't hype this one too much. This is a great game. Well, Ed, you got one against two here in the nation. You don't know which is one or which is two. It's a fantastic game. We had seven possessions in this game so far, and there's been four touchdowns. The Bison have been stopped twice. Pittsburgh State has been stopped once. What do you think it's going to come down to? Well, one thing that really impressed me, how hard they're hitting. There hasn't been a turnover yet in the game, and I think it's going to come down. Who's going to stop the, the other team at the last series? Now, I'm sure there's some fans out there saying, gosh, Bob, if you'd gotten the home field, we'd been up by 14. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ed. I appreciate that. Uh, we always try to do the best at North Dakota State, and, and we're going to have our share of home games. Pittsburgh has done a nice job of hosting this They've game. They've done a super job. they got a great crowd, and they, they deserved it. What about uh, next week for, let's say, the Gorillas win? What do you think would happen if, if Portland wins? Would they nor probably host? Well, just like us, our bid for next round is 70000 and Portland's 140000 With our weather where we are right now, we just can't meet, those, meet that bid. If Texas and I beats Portland, which they did during the regular season, I think we'll have an excellent chance of hosting. Okay, and how about uh, your season opener next year? There's been a lot of conversation about the Gorillas coming up to the Fargo Dome for the 1993 opener. What well, do you think? With the playoffs going on now, we don't want to announce our opener until after the playoffs, but we're excited about it. And I don't remember who we signed up, but we got a contract <laughs> two weeks ago, and I think the fans will really appreciate who's coming in. Bob, you got a lot of alumni groups from around the country watching you on satellite today. The state of the program, how do you feel? Super. It's it's great to be at North Dakota State. Our future looks bright. We have great support, and, and we're proud of all those people out there watching us now. All right, Bob, thanks for joining us here at halftime as we're getting ready to start the second half. The Gorillas will receive to start the second half as Darren Prather joins us back in the broadcast booth. And Darren, I mentioned to Bob, you know, seven possessions, four touchdowns. Uh, we've seen one fake punt, which was a really big play for the Gorillas that really gave them some momentum. And uh, the Bison have been stopped twice, the Gorillas once. I mean, we are seeing two top-ranked football teams show people around the country why they are where they are. No doubt. You know, they're definitely getting their money's worth. As the old adage says, it's interesting you mentioned the uh, fake punt. That just happens to be the longest play from scrimmage of the entire football game to this point. In the numbers category, you've got rushing 147 for the Bison, 117 for the Gorillas. Total offense favoring North Dakota State. Time of possession relative even. Individually, Arden Beachy, 98 yards total offense and one touchdown, and as expected, Ronald Moore, extremely tough to stop. He's got 17 carries, 86 yards, and two touchdowns, and of course, his biggest play was that fake punt on fourth down, which set up the Gorillas' first touchdown on the day. You see Arden Beachy, who I think uh, has been just an arm tackle away from breaking a couple of big runs today. There you see Eric Hagerly. The Bison took a couple of big hits in that first half. Out Jeff Hagman, defensive tackle with a knee injury, will not play in the second half, and neither will offensive tackle Jim LaMarche out with a knee injury. And Chuck Broyles has got to look at that as a big break for his football team. You know, the Gorillas have really been pretty fortunate this year in the lack of injuries that they've sustained over the course of the season. Jirai, you hate to see the teams get this far along and then have some reason that they're not going to be all at 100%. You um, got to like the way the Bison are playing so far. You, you kind of gave the athletic director a little bit of grief about not playing at home, but playing Pittsburgh State at Pittsburgh State and playing them even for one half, that's saying quite a bit. These are the two best Division II football programs in the country over the last 10 years. Rocky Hager and Chuck Broyles deadlocked at 14 in front of a jam-packed Brandenburg Field, Kearney Smith Stadium in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and we're ready for the second half. Ludwig Milfors from the 35. And Pittsburgh State to cling across the 20, shy of the 30-yard line, and that's where the Gorillas will take over first and 10. Notice they did not kick it to Ronald Moore. Probably a good decision there. Kling is a tough competitor, and he's not afraid of taking a hit, which basically comes down to when you have that kind of a special teams effort, you have to be a little kamikaze, a 22-yard return. Kling, 22 yards on the return, brings it out to about the 28 and a half. It'll be first down. 
Let's see what kind of adjustments the Gorillas made at halftime. Hutchins, the quarterback, has rushed for nine touchdowns on the year and thrown for 12. And this is Ronald Moore across the 30. A loose football. The Bison say they have it. So the referees. It is a turn. And it will be Bison football. Ronald Moore, not known for turning the ball over, does on the first play of the second half. And the Bison get a big break, first and 10, at the Gorilla 34-yard line. This is exactly what happened to North Dakota last week. When they the, the, the opening kickoff. Kick yep. That is the first turnover of the ball game as North Dakota State will get it first and 10 at the Gorilla 34. And Arden Beachy will go right back to work for the Bison. He's got Cahill to the bottom of your screen and Garen to the top on the option. The blitz, Beachy met there by the free safety for Pittsburgh State, Chris Brown, only a freshman at 5'11", 170. But I must hand it to him. He's played a very fine game today. He is a good open field tackler. Very fast player, but the Gorillas' defense isn't designed for their free safety to be making that many plays. You see Mangarelli coming from inside there, almost gets to Beachy. Nice block, though, keeping him away before Brown able to slow him down. Ski did a nice job on Troy Wilson, the outside linebacker that time. Now he's lined up in that defensive end spot on the 40 defense. Second down and six from the 31 yard line. The blitz is on near side. The give. Carlson. Big play. This could be a touchdown. Bison are back on the board. What an outstanding run. And you know what? The play was set up probably almost as much by T.R. McDonald, the wide receiver. He sold quarterback Joel Thornton on the pass. Thornton never turned around. He could have stopped him for ten, at the 10 yard line. Kyle Carlson from Dickinson, North Dakota, from 31 yards out. With 55 seconds gone in the second half, the Bison have taken their second lead of the day at 20 to 14. Wow. Ludwig Milfors will attempt the extra point. Pete Erickson to hold. 34 yards in two plays. Carlson, the 31-yard touchdown run. And the kick by Milfors is good. The Bison lead it 21 to 14, and there's the give on the dive. Just right smack Look at that block by the offensive tackle on the near side, Scott Boots. Wow, not able to run up with him. Now keep in mind there are two players still downfield, McDonald and Thornton. Neither of them, like I said, McDonald did a great job of saying he actually made a play. He tried to pretend like he was passing it over his shoulder. The Bison with the lead, and we'll be back. What does it take to make the perfect window? Start with a solid wood core for stability and insulation value. Cover it with vinyl so it's virtually maintenance free. Add high performance insulating glass to save energy. Then make them easy to operate. And of course, beautiful. Then they'd be perfect. Of course, then they'd be Anderson Permashield windows. Margo Sash and Doyer, Anderson Window Retail Window Center, 210 North 11th Street. Pontiac, GMC Truck, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, Mazda. Five good reasons Celand is your automotive superstore. Another reason, super deals like this. A 1993 Pontiac Grand Am with anti-lock brakes, air, tilt, and much more. Only $12,995. Just $12,995 for a 93 Pontiac Grand Am. So shop the superstore. Celand, south of I-94, Moorhead. Watch the left guard for North Dakota State. Scott Fuchs to the left of your screen. He just buries that defensive tackle right there. And that is a big veer option touchdown run by Kyle Carlson of the Bison take the lead. And there you see the offensive line going over things with Bruce Sum. And there you see it, Darren. A turnover leads to a touchdown. You got it, you got it exactly. What do you think he's telling these guys? Hey, yeah, that's the way you do it. Keep it up. That's the way you do it. About 500 Bison fans here today from all over the country. Former players, alumni, Have fans. To be enjoying themselves now here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Well, this is a gut check now for the Gorillas. They have not been behind at any one time in the second half this year, except once against the Missouri Ball Club. In Missouri Western, they were down and kicked a last second field goal to uh, pull out the win. There's Ronald Moore. The thing the Gorillas don't want to have to do right now is to try to get it all back in one or two places. Don't deviate from the norm. You gotta keep your offense and See what happens. Ludwig.
Ludwig Milfors from the 35 yard line. Only 55 seconds gone here in the second half. And the Bison lead it 21 to 14. And the kick to Ronald Moore. They'll defend him. Moore at the 10. On a middle return. Has a seam. And brought down nicely there by the Bison. Bryant DeVries. Let's go down to Dana Mock. Uh, fellas, just an injury update uh, from the first half. Jim LaMarche, the offensive lineman for North Dakota State, sprained uh, his medial collateral on his knee, the same injury he had prior to the start of the season, which basically cost him his starting job. And defensive tackle Jeff Hagman has a pretty serious sprain on his ankle. He will not return today. Neither will Jim LaMarche. But if there is more football for the Bison to be played in about a week, both players could be back in Bison uniforms. So the Bison with 13.58 remaining in the third quarter, leading 21 to 14, and injuries a big factor now in this ball game. Illegal procedure against the Gorillas. It'll stay first down, but 15 now as they'll mark the ball inside the 30 at about the 28-yard line as you see the Bison sideline and Shane Hoddenfield, the secondary coach for North Dakota State. We have not seen any real big offensive plays today by either ball club except for that 31 yard run by Kyle Carlson. This is going to be a pass play to the tight end. Sparkman across the midfield stripe down to the Bison 43 yard line. First down Gorillas. He spoke a little too soon on that one. No big plays up until that point for Pittsburgh State with the exception of that big punt return. That is, that is only the eighth reception on the year by your tight end. Sparkman, but he easily gets behind the secondary for 29 yards. But you'll also notice that he's capitalized on quite a few. I think he has three or four touchdowns out of those eight catches. From the 45, the Gorillas. This is Tobin. Tobin at the line of scrimmage, and not much there. Joe Toth and Schaffner and Punzak making the stop for the Bison. Toth is so strong, he's just able to hold on to him. Looked like Tobin was running in place on a treadmill for a while. Brian Hutchins hitting 76 of 160 of his passes this year for 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns and only six interceptions. Hutchins wants to throw it. He'll find the alley and picks his way inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line, and he's very dangerous that way. You have to contain him, although he doesn't have game-breaking speed. He just won't hurt you on plays like that. Hutchins, is it's interesting watching him running almost like he's out of control. It's like he's out of balance the whole time. But the key play of that one there was that simple fake right there opened up the middle for him to pick up four or five more yards. We have seen eight total possessions in this game. Five touchdowns. 21-14 Bison on third down. Tobin to the 35 and he will be close to first down yardage tripped up there by Paul Schaffner the linebacker and also Matt Steinberg looks like he came up a couple of inches short so the Gorillas again looking at a fourth down and short situation and I'll guarantee you the Bison will be looking for a fake punt <laughs> Well, I don't think they're going to be funding it here. It looks like they're going to go ahead and go for it. They, last time they faced fourth, though, they went ahead and called timeout. I think they did that twice now. The Gorilla fans, they want Royals and company to go for it. Moore over the top. I don't know. The Bison no, say they held not, him. Did not get it. Ronald Moore went over the top, and the Bison defense holds. North Dakota State up front answering to the challenge. And that is only the second time today that the Gorilla offense has been stopped. Third time today that the Gorilla offense has been stopped by the Bison. And there you see Matt Steinberg in on the stop for North Dakota State. Just did an outstanding job of flooding the middle of it. I don't think they were fooled one bit on that play. Keying in on Moore trying to go airborne over the top. So with 11.48 remaining in the third, the Bison get the ball back, leading by seven. Arden Beachy, they string it out, and Beachy will keep it to about the 38-yard line. And again, 
Chris Brown making the stop along with outside linebacker Troy Wilson. Chris Brown really getting thrown into the fire for Pittsburgh State coming in as the starting free safety after an injury to Burke Sopcher in about the uh, seventh or eighth game of the season. Did you notice how they triple teamed Troy Wilson on that play as well? There you see Shane Heidenfield, the secondary coach for the Bison out of Ray, North Dakota. He is telling them we got to cover the tight end. <laughs> Second down, let's make it seven from the 38. Beachy, long count. Again, the dive, this is Hanson, up to the 40 and not much there. The Bison, who Rocky Hager said before the game, they've got to be patient within the design of their offense. Making the stop, Chris Hanna, 6'1", 270, a junior. And Hanson, as I mentioned, 164 yards last week against Northeast Missouri in a 42-7 win in the opening game of the playoffs. So here we go with a third down and about five from the 41-yard line. The 40 defense. Beachy. The down the line option pass. Beachy back to Carlson and driven out of bounds. He may have gotten it. Looks like maybe the referees are going to give him that play. They're spotting it, oh, maybe about a four, uh, four or five inches oh, short of the first close. down. That was a great, great second effort right there. He almost went out of bounds about four or five yards shy. It'll be fourth down at about three quarters of a yard for North Dakota State. And Rocky Hager went for it on fourth down in the first half at about this point of the field. And wow. it turned into a touchdown yeah. for Pittsburgh State. This is a gutsy, gutsy it call right here. It is a right gutsy here. call. The Bison leading 21-14, knowing there's no tomorrow. Beachy on fourth and inches. Beachy, he may have been pushed forward by a Pittsburgh it looked State like, tackler. Didn't it? Exactly, it looked like that. First Indeed. down, North Dakota State. He's pushed his, he pointed his body in the right direction and got a little bit of help from his, uh, from his friends right there. Positive yards as Jerry Boone, the outside linebacker at 5'9", 175, and a senior making the stop on Beachy. But Rocky Hager playing Russian roulette <laughs> against the number one team of the nation at their place, going for it what a call. at the 45-yard line. First down, Bison. Cahill and Guerin are the wide receivers against a five-man front. Beachy. Almost a mix-up, carries it himself to about the 49-yard line. He had a either a linebacker or a defensive back come up on him and force him to eliminate that option and decided to turn it upfield, and there wasn't anything there for him. 9.45 remaining, third quarter action. North Dakota State capitalizing on a turnover at the 34-yard line, the first play of the second half. Scoring two plays later and now leading 21-14. Beachy. He wants to throw it. The tight end is Ski, and it's knocked down by the free safety. Chris Brown, and it may be interference. It looks a little bit like Brown was all over him. As a matter of fact, he was on his back as the ball got into the air. Eric Ski, the tight end. Only two receptions on the year. against Chris Brown, the freshman free safety, and that'll be a first down for North Dakota State in guerrilla territory. Boy, talk about your mismatches right there. You've got Brown, just a very small guy, and then you've got Eric Skye, 230 pounds, 6'2", senior. Ski Major. not known Ski, for his great me. receiving. Yeah, but... <laughs> probably a better receiver than what they've thrown to him, but they've got three great wide receivers in this Bison offense. They've been waiting for the free safety to come up close like that all day and he did cover up on that play but it was pass interference it'll be first down at the 41 of the gorillas beachy with two tight ends gorillas showing blitz beachy calling the play at the line of scrimmage the counter option and the blitz and it could be a hold against the bison yeah, that's the initial indication from the referee. Excellent surge up front by Pittsburgh State. Chris Hanna got in there. Harris making the stop that time 
Barron, and it is going to be against North Dakota State. It's interesting that this crew, officiating crew, out of the North Central Conference, had the Morningside game three weeks ago and flagged North Dakota State five times for holding penalties. Only the first time today. It's just been a super ball game. Very well played all the way throughout. Both teams gambling a little bit, having a little bit of fun. Now, how involved is Chuck Broyles on the defensive side of the football? He's got an offensive coordinator who runs the show. And what about Broyles on the defensive side? Broyles just this year passed the baton to be a, a defensive coordinator in Tim Beck. However, he still is very involved in the defense. This will be now a first down and 21 from the point of the infraction. It takes the Bison back into their territory at the 47-yard line. So North Dakota State will answer with Garen to the wide side of the field and Cahill to the bottom of your screen. Beachy against the blitz, wants to throw it. He's going to Garen on the post corner, and it's incomplete. Coverage on the far side of the field that time by Eric Perks, the fifth defensive back in that nickel package for Pittsburgh State. I tell you what, if he would have looked underneath a little bit more, he had Pete Erickson open for a really nice gain on that play. As it was, it falls incomplete. Still could have been caught. You're watching NCAA quarterfinal playoff action live from Pittsburgh, Kansas. Ed Schultz with Darren Prather and Dana Mock. The Bison with 8.56 remaining in the third quarter lead Pittsburgh 21 to 14. They're now faced with a second down and 21 from their own 47. Beachy again on the weak side option has an alley and a big play. Beachy down the sideline and out of bounds inside the 40 to the Gorilla 37-yard line. I don't think Jerry Boone has shoes on his feet anymore. He was faked totally out of them. What a great job of doing the option here. Number 17, Boone picking up the quarterback. In fact, he goes for the running back. I even thought he pitched it to him. Arden Beachy has been the difference in this football game so far for the Bison. And now, third down conversion coming up for North Dakota State from the 37 of the Gorillas. 8.48 remaining, third quarter action. Third down and five. Out of a two tight end formation. Beachy, down the line, option pass. Cahill, first down, Bison. Inside the 20 and down to the 17 yard line. Sean Cahill from Harvey, North Dakota on the deep slant from Arden Beachy. That is a tough pass to throw, going one way and coming back on the slam. Throwing across his body like that, a great job of watching what was going on out in front of him as well. Excellent pass, nice zip on the ball, giving him an opportunity to do something with it after he catches the football as well. Duke Palmer on the coverage that time after a 22-yard gain for the Bison. It'll be first down just inside the 20-yard line. They'll mark it at the 17. Beachy. This is Carlson inside the 15 and down to the 11 yard line. The offensive line is really doing a great job of just pushing Pittsburgh State's defensive line back off the ball. Really starting to dominate this football game. Look at the left side of that offensive line. They do a nice job. Eric Ski on Troy Wilson that time. Wilson was playing the stretch technique in case Beachy were to come down the line of scrimmage and they went on the dive give that time and Carlson picks up seven yards. They'll mark it just outside the 10. It'll be second down and four. Making about a six and a half yard gain for the Bison. Out of two tight ends, the blitz is on. Beachy runs around it inside the 10, holds on to the football, short of the first down. Bison did a great job of picking up that blitz as well. Raul Sanchez picked up Lance Gosh, firing into the middle from his inside linebacker position. Leaves him with about third and maybe two yards. I tell you what, Rocky Hager, and you see Tony Satter to the left of Rocky, who had a tremendous career for the Bison and has done a remarkable job coaching the running backs for this team this year. It's going to be third down and about two. The Bison with an unbalanced line to the wide side of the field. They run option that way. Beachy will eat it. Inside the 10, they had the option pitch to Sanchez covered. Beachy does the smart thing, and now it's going to be fourth down, and I would imagine Rocky would attempt the field goal here with Ludwig Milforce. Ball's right in the middle of the field, but the Bison 
He wants a timeout. Rocky wants to talk about it. You don't want to get in this close against the number one team in the nation and come away with no points. With 6.34 remaining, the Bison lead at 21-14. The Tool Crib of the North offers big savings on Makita power tools through the holidays. Cut with precision with the Makita LS 1030 Heavy Duty Miter Saw. Now just $179.95. Drive home savings on the new 9.6 volt Makita cordless drill kit with extra battery for only $159.95. Or cut wood like butter with a Makita 7 and a quarter inch Super Duty Circular Saw with carrying case. Now only $119.95. Save big on Makita power tools through the holidays at Acme Electric Tool Crib of the North. In Grand Forks and Fargo. From slabs for garbage cans, to paved farmyards, to tilt-up walls for buildings, concrete gives durability, good appearance, and long-time economy that no other building material can offer. Call your local FM Ready Mix plant. They've got the experience, equipment, and staff to supply you with the quality concrete for a truly professional job, a standard you can depend on. Residential, commercial, rural. When it comes to concrete, FM Ready Mix is all you need to know. The Bison, with 6.34 remaining in the third quarter, will attempt a field goal on fourth down and three from the 10-yard line. And, Darren, this is probably the most effective defense against Ronald Moore. This is the 14th play in the drive. Yeah, almost five minutes have been taken up, a little over that in this particular drive. Only six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. From 27 yards out, Ludwig Milfors who is seven for 11 on the year. Plenty of foot. The Bison back on the board, 24-14. North Dakota State opens up a 10-point lead here at Brandenburg Field, and we'll be back. That's right. Laney's has extended its hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. That means you won't be charged time and a half for work done after 4.30. They've even included 8 a.m. till noon Saturday at the regular rate. 8 to 8 at a regular rate. Thanks to Laney's, there's no hurry. Don't you worry. 8 to 8, it's just great. If this car doesn't start, I'm gonna be late. I'd better do something before the weather really gets cold. Right away, I thought of Farnham's Napa Auto Parts. I've told them I've been busy lately and just haven't had time to worry about my car. They told me I should get a quality Napa engine heater, now on sale for just $12.99. Don't get stopped short. Get a Napa engine heater at Farnham's and participating service outlets. Congratulate one of the guys on our crew, Trent and Wendy Mahler, with a seven pound, seven ounce girl today. Congratulations. So far, a big day all the way around for the Bison community. And this is a rare occasion that Pittsburgh State would be trailing by 10 points in the second half at their place. They've been down by a couple of touchdowns before, but only in the first half. They're going to have to do something with the ball here. Kicking it away again from Ronald Moore to Shad Kling. Picks it up at about the three. Gets it all the way up to about the 22-yard line. Finally brought down by the Bison attack. Well, the Bison doing a fine job of trying to keep the ball away from Ronald Moore. But now, with 6.24 remaining here in the third quarter, Pittsburgh fans a little anxious as to what their offense can do, I think Staten is a big key now. They've got to get the ball to the outside. 54 yards, 13 plays, over five minutes taken up off the clock by the Bison offense. They're notorious for that in the second half. Brian Hutchins from his own 21-yard line, and he'll keep it in the alley. And Hutchins stopped there by Israel Moses. That's a trademark of this Bison defense, the way they can fly to the alley. Chad Punzak also making the stop at the 25-yard line. 
Did a good job of following his blockers right there. Jack Bohannon, number 72, leading the way for the Gorillas, but only a gain of four yards. Now, you mentioned it's going to be a key thing for State, and you're absolutely right, but these, this team is a lot like North Dakota State. They do not want to have to get into a throwing situation. State to the top of your screen against Israel Moses. On the option, they want to go to Staten, and he overshoots him at the 50-yard line, and there's no flag. There was no penalty. The Pittsburgh sideline erupts. No, that was no penalty. He did a good job. The defenders, he just split the defenders, but I don't think any of them made contact that far down. Well, Chuck Broyles thought there was a penalty. Let's look at it. Well, we might have gotten the other ball a little bit too far up in the air to see what was going on with the contact. Dufran still on the referees wanting a little bit of a penalty, but the Gorillas now, by throwing the football, have found themselves in a hole here, facing a third down and sixth situation. Chuck Broyles working over the official on his sideline. Now it's going to be third down and seven. This is Hutchins, and Hutchins is what a gutsy player. Very close to first down yardage. He may have it at the 32. North Dakota State has answered. They trailed 14-7, and now they put three unanswered touchdowns on the board, or three unanswered scores, two touchdowns and a field goal. There you see Hutchins, and his carry is good for the first down, out to the 32-yard line, with 5.30 remaining here in the third quarter, 24-14 North Dakota State. Two receivers to the bottom of your screen. They motion Sean Scott to a trips. And Hutchins going for broke. This is Staten incomplete, double covered by Straub and Jacobson. He had Sean Scott, the motion man, open in the near sideline. Sean Scott is a talent. He really is. He's not as good, of course, as Ronald Moore to this point, but he's only a sophomore, and it's surprising that they aren't using him more. He's in there now, I think, is more of a just as a guinea pig. I mean, he wants them to start biting on him and free it up a little bit more up the line. Well, the Bison weren't fooled by that. The motion to trips. They covered the deep man with Jacobson and also Strout. Now it's second down and 10 from their own 32. Out of a two tight end formation. They run the delay. This is Tobin and Sean Stewart is there at the 35 yard line. And Tobin into today's game with 835 yards rushing and averaging over six yards a carry. And now I believe the patience is going to be tested by the Gorillas. I mean, they can't start throwing the football all over the place. That's not their offense, but now this is a crucial third down conversion attempt at their own 35. It's going to be third down and eight. They have not stopped the Bison on their last two possessions. Down the line option pass. Staten at the 42, close to first down yardage. He'll need a good spot. He may have just gotten that too from the referee. That's going to be a very close to a first down. They'll have to, I think, bring in the chains. Yeah, that's what they're doing right now. You mentioned how the they well the third down conversions last week was a big story for Pittsburgh. They had only three of 12 against the Sioux. And now when you're down by 14, you can't have 25 or 30 percent of your conversions. You got to do a lot better than that. Down by 10. You're absolutely right. They really need to get it going here in this drive if they're going to stay alive in this football game. Looks like maybe oh, two inches close. short. Does Broyles go for it? Lots of time left, but it's going to take two scores to tie or beat the Bison at this point. Watch and Ronald Royals Moore. is going to be tested. The Bison, the last time, stopped Ronald Moore in the center of the line on fourth down, but that was in Bison territory. Now it's in Gorilla territory at the 42. And Royals wants a timeout. North Dakota State leads Pittsburgh State with 4.30 remaining here in the third quarter. It is 24 to 14. You know, you were talking about Sean Stewart on the play before that, making a good job up the middle. It's interesting that that's the first time we called his number this game because that was supposed to be a key matchup going in. Here's the pass, the last one you saw to Ray Staten. Hutchins getting in the ball, Staten unable to really do much with it after he catches it, as you saw, just a couple of inches short. But getting back to the play before it, Stewart going up against a guy, Mike Brockle, who has not played center for Pittsburgh State this entire season, having to play today because of an injury to Doug Bullard last week. Well, Israel Moses is being worked on the Bison sideline right at the 40-yard line with a trainer, Scott Walken. They're working his neck. 
But you might have a pinched nerve. You may have a pinched nerve. And Steve Marion out of Bismarck, North Dakota, a strong safety at 5'11 and 210 pounds and a junior is checking in there. Ronald Moore. Ronald Moore only held only three yards here in the second half. And maybe it's not Ronald Moore's fault that that's the statistic he's living with because the Bison have controlled the football here in the second half. Well, and they've had to go to the air a little more than what they're used to as well. Don't look for him to be getting a whole lot of yardage on this play either. So the Gorillas will roll the dice on fourth down and inches from their own 42. We're still in the third quarter. Moore, first down and then some. Pulls his way out to the midfield strike. Moore showing that he's uh, not finished yet. Ronald, I think, wanting to atone a little bit for that error at the uh, beginning of the first, second half and uh, picking up a nice gain on that play. Well, that's the one thing that characterizes his play is that he's just as strong at the end of the game as he is at the beginning of the game. He's in phenomenal shape. Put on about 25, 30 pounds during the offseason. It really hasn't slowed him down any at all. Going to be first down and 10 from the 48-yard line in their own territory. Hutchins will keep it on the option, and he meets a linebacker there in Paul Schaffner at the 49 of North Dakota State. Hello. Schaffner wrapped him up in a hurry. He may want to think twice before he runs up that part of the field again. The Bison there with Sean Stewart at the nose guard position was triple teamed on that play. Hunzak also helping out on the stop along with linebacker Matt Steinberg. Keep in mind, Hutchins did have to leave last week's game in the third quarter because of back spasm. So if he keeps getting hammered like that, he may not be seeing much more of him the rest of this ball game. 3.30 and counting remaining here in the third quarter at Brandenburg Field. It is going to be, they barely get the playoff. They had about one second left on the on the uh, play clock before they tried to snap that ball, and that's exactly what happens when you do that. Kind that's of thing. the frustrating thing for a coach. Here you are in the 13th game of the year, and you're still fighting with the play clock to get the playoff. Uh, North Dakota State had that problem several weeks ago at home against Morningside, and it's so frustrating, but you run into those things when you're trying to make decisions in key points of the ball game, running players in and out or through a signal system, and that's going to back it up five, and it's going to be second down, and let's make it about 12 for the Gorillas at their own 46. They look for Staten. He's got it. Big play for the yard line. And that's going to be close to a Gorilla first down. And a big hit by Eric Hegerly, the free safety for the Bison. He really put his helmet on him, stopped him short right in his tracks. It's not good. Yes, it will. It'll be just good enough for a first down. I'll tell you what, this is a great throw. He puts it right in the alley with authority. Hegerly, the only person in the way of Staten and a touchdown. Staten, not a very big player. He comes into the game with uh, only, he's, he's got an he awfully big heart. He's got an awfully big heart. He held on to that like one. That. <laughs> he knew it was coming and he put the mitts on it. Fumbled snap. Hutchins does what he has to do, picks it up and goes, and Stroud will cover him up at the 39 yard line. Working the fumble ruski there. Yeah, that that's is an awfully popular play in this part of the country. No I see on the TV last night that Kansas ran it. Did you see that? They stole it from Nebraska. <laughs> Gorillas used something to that effect last week. They had their backup quarterback, and he dropped the snap and picked it up and then just kind of pitched it over the middle and picked up 26 yards to his tight end. Well, how many yards rushing do your guards have this year? None. Okay. <laughs> Hutchins There's to the time. outside is Scott. And the Bison try to corral Sean Scott, but I believe he's got the first down at the 30-yard line. There's the man I've been telling you. I'm a fan of this guy, Sean Scott. He seems 21. to have good speed to the outside. And he's a very quick player. He's very runs quite a bit like Ronald Moore and his ability to just take people with him. Moore is kind of taking him under his wing and teaching him as he goes. This is a great football game. We have seen excellent offensive line play today. We have seen big stops on fourth down. We have seen fake punts. We've seen option football at its best. Third down and one. 31 yard line of the Bison camp. This is Tobin and he's got the first down inside the 30 yard line. 
but they'll stop the clock to make sure for a measurement with a minute 34 remaining in the third quarter. More time. Infamously known, the Road Warriors. <laughs> There's Great. one guy in that group that has been to 136 consecutive Bison football games. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Hey, why not? You've got a football team as good as this one. I think I tend to follow it all over the country as well. First down, Pittsburgh State at the Bison 30. The Bison leading 24-14 with a minute 34 remaining in the third quarter. Hope you're enjoying the coverage in Minot, Bismarck, Fargo, and Grand Forks and around the country. Alumni groups gathering to see the Bison tangle with the Gorillas in the jungle. The two top-ranked teams in the country.